Uh, dear students, I am Mahesh Javalkar of Maratha Mandal Polytechnic, and today I am posting my fifth video on DCT question paper of the year or 2020 electronic section. Okay, so let's start with the question. Question number 81. CDI system means what? Okay. Now this is a a question asked on automotive electronics. Now CDI system is a a capacitor discharge ignition system. Okay. So this this system is the latest one which which has replaced the inductive system. Okay. So it is a capacitor discharge ignition. So here you can see the theory for it. A capacitor discharge ignition CDI or a thyristor ignition. is a, a type of automotive electronic ignition system which is widely used in outboard motors motorcycles lawn mowers chainsaws small engines turbine aircraft cars okay it was originally developed to overcome the long charging times associated with high inductance coils used in inductive discharge ignition idi systems which were there before now making the ignition system more suitable for high engine speeds for small engines racing engines and rotary engines the a capacitor discharge ignition uses a capacitor discharge current to the coil to fire the spark plug okay so the capacitor discharge current is used to fire the spark plug so it is in ignition and it is called as a capacitor discharge ignition CDI. So option A will be the right answer over here. Okay. Then we'll go to the next question. A ribbon microphone is a type of what? Options are velocity microphone, pressure microphone, temperature microphone, and humidity microphone. Okay. Now in a ribbon microphone, a thin aluminium will be placed between a magnetic field. and in that magnetic field as the sound hits it as the sound hits it it will move to and fro and that movement will give you a change in electric current okay so that sound movement what hits it is the velocity movement and that is why it is called as velocity microphone a velocity microphone so if you see the theory of it a ribbon microphone consists of a very thin piece of correlated aluminium suspended in between the positive and negative poles of a magnet as sound waves hit this thin piece of metal within the magnetic field it vibrates and creates a small electrical signal which is picked up by the uh, connections at the end of the ribbon the uh, tension induced on the ribbon is created by the speed of the air coming from the sound source that is why it is also called as velocity microphone okay so here the option is velocity microphone so option a is the right answer here then we'll go to the next question the following projector passes light through panels okay now out of this four options the liquid crystal display lcd projector is one which will pass different colors through panels okay so if you see the theory here the lcd projectors display images using red blue and green beams that pass through individual lcd panels these beams are then combined using a dichroic prism to project the image through a lens so here the answer for the projector which uses panels is lcd liquid crystal display lcd projector okay so the following projector is one which passes light through panels and then we'll go to the next question a deviation of measured value from the true value is called okay now this is a basic question of electronic measurement and instrumentation emi subject now anything which is deviated from the true value is called as error so a deviation of measured value from the true value is called as error so option a will be the right answer here error then we'll go to the next question a maxwell bridge is used for measurement of what a resistance inductance capacitance or frequency maxwell bridge is used for measurement of inductance okay there we can see a maxwell bridge is a modification of wheatstone bridge used to measure an unknown inductance usually of low quality value low q value 
in terms of a calibrated resistance and inductance or resistance and capacitance okay so basically maxwell bridge is used to measure inductance so here b inductance will be the answer then we'll go to the next question question number 86 a a transducer that does not require an external power source for its operation is called as obviously the a transducer which does not require external power is called as active transducer or a transducer which requires an external power is called as passive transducer now here for this statement it does not require an external power source that means the answer here is active transducer option a is the right answer okay so if you see the theory here an active transducer is one that does not require any power source in order to function these transducers work only through the energy conversion principle where they produce an electrical signal that is proportional to the input okay so here the option is active transducer so option a is the right answer here then we'll go to the next question measurement of a cryogenic range is done by using what resistance thermistor thermocouple or hall effect okay so here if you see the theory in physics a cryogenics is the production and behavior of materials at very low temperatures a cryogenics is the branch of physics that deals with the production and effects of very low temperatures a cryogenic temperature sensors have been developed based on variety of a temperature dependent properties a common commercial available sensors include resistors or capacitors thermocouples and semiconductor junction devices such as diodes or transistor now from our four options what we are having we are having option a resistance also and we are having option thermocouple okay so the option thermocouple will be a specific answer for this question so option c thermocouple measurement in a cryogenic range is done by using thermocouple okay then we'll go to the next question in the pmmc that is permanent magnet moving coil meter the scale is of what type logarithmic linear sinusoidal or tangential okay so here the answer is obviously linear okay so answer b will be there linear so here you can see a, a permanent magnet moving coil pmmc meter is also known as d arson wall meter or galvanometer it is an instrument that allows you to measure the current through a coil by observing the coil's angular deflection in a uniform magnetic field okay the scale is uniformly divided that is linear the scale is uniformly divided as the current is directly proportional to the deflection of the pointer so here the answer will be linear so b linear is the answer and now we'll go to question number 89 a, a dc voltmeter is constructed using what okay now we can build a dc voltmeter using a pmmc meter okay a pmmc meter is basically a meter which will measure a dc current now if you put a resistance in series with a pmmc meter then we can get a basic dc voltmeter so here option c will be the right answer a a pmmc meter and a series resistance okay so here if you see the theory dc voltmeter is a measuring instrument which is used to measure the dc voltage across any two points of electric circuit if we place a resistor in series with the pmmc a galvanometer then the entire combination together acts as dc voltmeter as shown in the figure okay so here the resistance in series with pmmc so here option c will be the right answer a a pmmc meter and a series resistance then we'll go to the next question question number 90 a crt screen okay a crt screen which is used in your cro okay a crt screen is coated with dash material okay now in crt screen our basic objective is what whenever the electrons hit the material a light should be coming out a light a image should be shown okay then for that the material used is phosphor so option a will be the right answer so here you can see the crt screen 
the inside of the large end of a CRT is coated with a fluorescent material that gives off light when struck by electrons. This coating is necessary because the electron beam itself is invisible. The material used to convert the electron's energy into visible light is a phosphor, phosphor material used. So here you can see option A, phosphor is the answer. That is a CRT screen of the CRO is coated with phosphor material. Then we'll go to the next question. Ohm's law is applicable for the following cases. Obviously, as a general statement, as a whole statement, we can say it is applicable for conductors. So option B will be the right answer here. According to Ohm's law, it is applicable only to conductors. Hence, Ohm's law is not applicable in case of insulators. Ohm's law is not applicable to semiconductors and insulators. Okay, So it is applicable to conductors. So option B will be the right answer here. Then we'll go to the next question. A, a three are resistors, that is values 3 ohm, 4 ohm and 5 ohm are connected in series with a 12 volt DC supply across. Then the current flowing through 4 ohm resistor is. Okay. So here if you see, this is a resistance 1, 2 and 3. 3 are resistance are in series. So say this, you can take it as uh, 3 ohms, 3 ohms, okay, and this you can take it as 4 ohms, this you can take it as 5 ohms, okay, so these are in, are connected across a voltage source, okay, so here you can show the voltage source, so here you can show the voltage source, which is connected across to it. So here you can show the voltage source which is connected across. Okay, and the voltage is plus minus, say it is 12 volts. Okay. Now here he has asked the current flowing through 4 ohm resistors. So he has asked current flowing here. Now same current will flow here also and same current will flow here also and same current will flow here also because they are connected in series. Now for this, we have to measure how much is the equivalent resistance. So the equivalent resistance R equivalent will be equal to 3 ohm plus 4 ohm plus 5 ohm, which is equal to 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 is 12 ohms. Okay, so this is 12 ohms. Now if you want current, current according to Ohm's law will be given as V upon R, which is nothing but 12 volt upon 12 ohms. Okay, so here the answer is 1 ampere. Okay, so here the answer is 1 ampere. Now, 1 ampere is not there in the option. Option C shows you 1 milliampere. Okay, so that there might be a, a printing mistake here. The answer should be 1 ampere. And here the option C, that is 1 milliampere, is given. So 1 milliampere should be taken as a mistake and it should be a 1 ampere for this answer. So option C, if it is 1 ampere, then option C will be the right answer for this. So actually it is not 1 milliampere, it is 1 ampere. So option C will be 1 ampere answer. So it is not 1 milliampere answer. Okay. So if out of this 4, Option C, if it is a, a printing mistake, okay, it should be 1 ampere, okay, it, it will not be 1 milliampere, it should be 1 ampere, okay. Then we'll go to the next question. The equivalent capacitance C is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 is applicable to the following circuits, okay. Now, in a capacitance, C is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 will come when they are connected in parallel. So a parallel combination of three capacitance will give C is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So option C will be the right answer here. Parallel combination of three capacitance. And then we'll go to the next question. In a DC circuit, three inductances L1, L2 and L3 are connected in series. The 
equivalent inductance L is given by what? Now, whenever the inductors are connected in series, they follow the law of series of resistance. So, equivalent inductance should be equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3. Okay. So, here option C will be the right answer. L is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3. Okay. Then we will go to the next question. The equation for energy stored in inductor is given by what? Okay. So, it is half Li square, whatever we get equation. Option B will be the right answer. And here you can see the energy in an inductor. That is, when an electric current is flowing in an inductor, there is energy stored in the magnetic field. Uh, considering a, a pure inductor L, the instantaneous power which must be supplied to initiate the current in the inductor is P is equal to IV. Okay. Now that IV so will be uh, given as Li di by dt. So energy input to build a final current I is given by integral energy stored is equal to 0 to I of power dt. Okay. So then Li of di that is equal to half Li square. Okay. So here if you integrate it the energy stored is uh, given as half Li square. So here option B that is half Li square T will be the right answer. Then we'll go to the next question. A reactance in an inductive circuit. Okay. Now here a reactance in an inductive circuit is given by okay, XL. XL is equal to 2 pi FL. Okay. So that means from this options, option A that is this reactance will increase with increase in frequency. That is the right option. So option A is increase with frequency. A reactance in an inductive circuit will increase with frequency. That is the right option, option A. So here you can see option A is the answer for this. Then we'll go to the next question. A, our resistors first three color bands are yellow, violet, brown from left to right. What is the resistance value? You can neglect the tolerance and give the resistance value. Now, if you see the chart of the color code, for yellow, violet and brown, you can see for yellow it is 4, violet it is 7. Okay. So the first two are taken as digit 4 and 7 and then brown is taken as 10 multiplier. So 4, 7 multiplied by 10 is 470. So here it is 470 option is C option 470 ohms. Okay. So here you can see it is 470 ohms. Clear? And now we'll go to the next question. Question number 98. A step down transformer will, okay, the options are increase the current in secondary, increase the voltage in secondary, increases the power in secondary, or decrease the voltage in secondary. Obviously, step down means decrease. So option D is decrease the voltage in secondary is the right answer for step down transformer. So here option D is the answer. Then we'll go to the next question. At absolute zero temperature, semiconductor behaves as what? Okay. When the temperature is low, then all the electrons in a semiconductor will be in valence band. They will not be in conduction band. You will not get any free electrons which will help you to make a current flow. Okay. That means at absolute zero temperature, semiconductor behaves as an insulator. Option B will be the right answer here. So here you can see at absolute zero, all the electrons by definition are found in valence band and hence at absolute zero temperature, a semiconductor behaves like an insulator. So here option B, insulator will be the right answer. The next we'll go to see diode used as a voltage regulator. Which diode you are going to take to be used as voltage regulator? So it is a famous application of Zener diode. So Zener diode used in reverse bias condition and it will show that at a certain voltage, voltage will remain constant and a current will go on increasing and that is used as voltage regulation. Okay, so here option D will be the right answer, Zener diode. A Zener diode is one which is specially designed that predominantly works in reverse bias conditions. They are more heavily doped than ordinary diodes due to which they have narrow depletion region. 
while regular diodes get damaged when the voltage across them exceeds the reverse breakdown voltage zener diode work exclusively in this region the uh, depletion region in zener diode goes back to its normal state when the reverse voltage gets removed this particular property of the zener diode makes it useful as a voltage regulator okay so here zener diode is one which is used as voltage regulator option d will be the right answer here now students with this video i have finished the 100 questions asked on the electronic section in the october 2020 dcet question paper okay well, thank you very much